Hello everybody, this is John from workoutandtravel.wordpress.com and today I want to talk about the Olympics. I am a huge Olympics fan, especially the Summer Olympics. I watch it every four years. I'll watch almost every event. You know, I'm up all night, especially watching the swimming. I like the gymnastics and I love track and field because I used to be a runner, so I follow track and field all year round. I watch the World Championships. I watch some of the Diamond League events and when the Olympics comes around, I mean, it's just great because you see a ton of records being set. We just saw the women's 10K record being set yesterday, and she broke it. She broke the record by a good margin. I think it was over 15 seconds. So that that's that's pretty big. Um, tonight we have the 100 meters women's finals, and tomorrow we have the 100 meters men's finals with Usain Bolt. And if he wins this, that would be three consecutive Olympic 100 meter championships which is insanity I mean that's that's being the fastest person in the world for 12 years in a row now he didn't win the world championship 12 years in a row but to win three Olympics in a row for sprinting is just insanity and in my opinion he's the best of it there's no questions asked he has the record in the 100 meters he has the record in the 200 meters and he, he could probably set the record in the 400 meters if he actually trained for it, but he's he's kind of said in interviews that he's not really interested in it. And if you're a runner, you know that the 400 is a lot different from the 100 and the 200, so I don't know if he's ever going to go that route. He'll prob probably retire from what he's saying. He might do one more world championship, but um, I would definitely consider Bolt the greatest track runner of all time. Not long distance, obviously, but the greatest sprinter. Number two probably being Carl Lewis. Um... The other thing I wanted to talk about, and I know a lot of people are going to not like that I'm saying this, but I think the swimming has too many events. Now, I'm a horrible swimmer myself, but I do like watching it. And the thing with swimming is, and I know a lot of people are going to say it's the same thing as running, but it's not. So, let's say, for example, you are the fastest in the 100-meter breaststroke. If you have the record in the 100-meter breaststroke, you're probably also going to have the record in the 200 meter breaststroke and the reason for that is it's not really much of a change between 100 meter swimming and 200 meter swimming and that the point I'm trying to make is that when you're swimming you're not necessarily going the fastest a lot of it is technique um, you got to have the right body for it you see most of the guys are pretty tall Michael Phelps is a tall really skinny guy I mean his you take one look at his physique and you could tell the guy's a swimmer he to me he looks like a fish has a very long upper body, very lean. Um, but I think there's just too many events. I mean, they're saying that he's won over 20 gold medals, and he has, but is he more accomplished than Usain Bolt that's going to win one event? You know, the 100 meters, you're the fastest sprinter. There's no questions asked. So is, is winning all these the different events, the, the freestyle, the backstroke at different meters, winning the... The brush stroke at, at different meters. I, I don't know if it's the same as, as track and field. So, I, in my opinion, they should probably get rid of some of the events. Um, I mean, of course, you want the freestyle event. And you could do that for the 50. You could do that for the 100. You could do that for the 200. But I don't know. Do you really necessarily need the brush stroke? Um... I don't know. I mean, or the backstroke for that much. I mean, I don't want to sound, I'm not trying to be facetious here, but when do you need to swim backwards? I mean, you don't run backwards. You, you don't ride a unicycle instead of riding a, a regular bicycle. It just doesn't make sense. Like, why do you have a swimming event where you swim backwards? And I know swimming backwards makes a little bit more sense than running backwards. Although running backwards is actually... A good training technique. I used to run backwards all the time. I mean, you can't really sprint. You could get a good, you know, you get to a pretty fast pace running backwards, and that's a great workout. But why do you have swimming backwards and at different distances? It just doesn't make any sense. So when you have these Olympic swimmers that have 15, 18, 20, 22 gold medals, you kind of have to accept it with a grain of salt because it's not the same as other events, so it's kind of apples and oranges. I Not to take anything away from Michael Phelps, he's maybe the greatest Olympic athlete of all time. And anybody who wins in multiple Olympics, in my mind, is a great athlete. But 
I just don't know if you could just keep picking different events when the breaststroke at 100, when the breaststroke stroke at 200, when the backstroke at 100 meters, when the backstroke at 200 meters, and say you kind of collected four different gold medals. I mean, you did, but the other thing too is, if you look at the speed, the speed between a swimmer doing the 100 meter backstroke compared to the 200 meter backstroke, the difference in speed is really not that much. You know, you're just doing an extra couple laps in the pool. So it's a little bit different, and I wouldn't compare it to running, where Usain Bolt winning the 100 meters or winning the 200 meters is completely different from running the 800 meters or running the mile or running the 10K. And running the mile in the 10K is completely different from running the marathon. So running is completely different. Swimming is a little bit of similar strokes, in, in, in my opinion. Um, what else could we say about the Olympics? Well, I just love the track and field. And one disappointing part of track and field is that you get a lot of drug uh, test failures in the Olympics. And you could see why. Because if you win the Olympics, that opens you up to a ton of opportunity. You're going to be on the, the box of Wheaties. You're going to get sponsorships. You know, there's a lot of money involved. So, unfortunately... When you see a record being broke in the Olympics for track and field, especially with women, they're quick to say that the athlete may or may not be on steroids, which it's a little bit annoying. But to be honest with you, if you look for the last 20, 30 years, there's been a lot of drug test failures in, in track and field. That's just the way it is. And even when that, that the woman set the record yesterday in the 10K, they're already saying that they think she's... You know, she's on steroids, which is kind of unfortunate, but that's also kind of the, the reason why I like watching the Olympics track and field so much, is that you do see so many records. I, I mean, these athletes, they train specifically for this event. They're coming in in their best shape in their life, and they're going all out compared to some of the other, you know, Diamond League competitions where there might be a race or two where they're kind of coasting it, and they'll they'll just go for the win, or they'll try to come in the top three. In the Olympics, they're going for the gold. So, you know, they're giving it their best. And that's what makes it so exciting. So, um, that's all I have for tonight. I can't wait to watch the 100-meter women's tonight. And I can't wait to see Usain Bolt tomorrow. That's going to be great. So, um, that's all I have for today. Thank you.